go fight. Tell him go fight. Welcome to episode 39 of Cooperators. That's kind of loud. Sorry. Just kind of getting back, in, back into the groove of things. Welcome to episode 39 of Cooperators. Uh, I'm Augmented Biscuits. I almost said your name. And with me, as always, is Chucking Dice. I'm Chucking Dice. You're Chucking Dice. Uh, it's been a bit. I uh, yeah. had some life events happening. Mainly, I had to deal with freaking a uh, friend's wedding and... <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also... Went out of town for a bit, I think. Yeah. Wait, did I go out of town? Um, I definitely went out you of went town. You went out of town, yeah. yeah. Actually, no, yeah, yeah, you went out of town. I went um, out of town, yeah. I had to do a friend's wedding. Actually, the two weekends of September, yeah. I actually had to do two things for my friend. One was his wedding, and the other thing was uh, his housewarming slash birthday. Oh, so yeah. I, all I w- did was uh, I went to Hot Springs and just... Were they hot? Oh, dude, they were hot. Uh, and there was a river by it, so you can jump in the river and jump in the hot spring. I think they do that in... Uh, is that Iceland or? Uh, yeah, they yeah. they call them the Polar Beer Club. They yeah. jump into like the cold water, and then there there's like a hot spring next to it or something yeah, like that. Yeah, same concept. How were, uh, was the hot spring relaxing? It was relaxing, and uh, at night, I mean, we we me and uh, Kodrin, who's been a guest on this podcast a couple times now, um, he uh, a couple times, you know what? Maybe one other time. Um, we uh, we were just hanging out in the hot springs at night. It's like we drove basically it was on the weekend. We drove up there. And uh, it's in, um, shoot, I can't even remember the place. Uh, somewhere up there. Some, yeah, somewhere in uh, north, oh, you know, going up north um, towards Sacramento. Um, but uh, not too far away from um, Yosemite, actually. Okay. Um, so it, it's like another like 20 minutes towards, you know, to get to Yosemite. But we stopped at this place. It's nighttime. Uh, you know, we check in our hotel we just directly go to after we check in we directly go to the hot springs and like you know we proceed to go down this like really sort of steep hill uh i didn't bring you're, my you're walking yeah you have to sort of it's not really a hike you just have to go down this incline and it's dark and uh last time Cotterman went he went on a full moon cuz he was coming back from his way to burning man and like we were just kind of going down this like you know dark hill and it's not a, it's not a full moon it's actually quite cloudy so like we're we have is like one phone light and like I you know we're shining our way down and like there's some people there enjoying the hot springs. We go in the hot spring, relax. Sometimes we jump into the river, jump back. Some people start leaving because it's getting later and later. It had to be around like eight or nine o'clock. Around like nine thirty, these uh these girls show up with this one guy, and they like strip down to nothing and then join, jump uh, jump in the uh, hot spring with us. And they're like introducing themselves. Hi, my name's Ashley. Hi, my name's you know Sarah. We're here for uh, Sarah's birthday. I'm like, oh, cool. That's a that's a that's a cool you know, I guess birthday party. Uh, and it's like, yeah, we were gonna. They're they're from Lake Tahoe and stuff like that. And they're just all naked. And so two they're, two, they're, two they're, girls they had, and a dude. Uh, no, it was like four girls and one dude. Actually, Na- five girls, five girls. So th- four of them were naked. One of them, like, didn't want to be naked, um, and but she was the she was like passing out like scotch and stuff, and we we're just like, can we try that? It's like if you wish, uh, I think it was Ashley, a happy birthday, and we we're like, all right, and we sang happy birthday. <laughs> That's cool <laughs> to this girl Ashley, and then we t- we took took a couple swigs. Um, it was fun. They, they yeah they they were uh, some of them were going to school for. Um, uh, I guess massage classes, massage um, therapists. Yeah, massage therapists. And uh, did they did they give you any kind of therapy for your thighs, like your inner thighs? <laughs> no, that did not happen. It was uh, very cordial. I don't know what kind of what kind of world you we think you think we live in, dude. It's called it's called, it's called it's hashtag it's Me Too. It's called <laughs> it's called fucking Pornhub. Okay, Pornhub. that's how porn starts. Right. Also, that's also how horror movies start. Yeah. I, well, it was kind of weird because they're like I. So the thing is, I didn't know that they were naked until they're like like in the because it was dark, so I couldn't see anything. Uh-huh. And like I'm like, oh, they're they really wearing skimpy skimpy bikinis here, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then like you know, they were just like, hey, Stacy or something like that. Why don't you join us? Uh, we're we're enjoying so much time. I don't think these guys you know care if you're naked or not. And I was just sitting there like, oh, you guys are naked? And it's like, it's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, well, that explains a lot. <laughs> um, and they're, so, yeah, they're, I'm just like, you know, trying not to look like a creep, but 
It's a good thing it was dark. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and that, that one dude was just like, uh, I mean, he was cool. Like, you know, we were talking, uh, drinking enjoying Do you dude like so the weird thing so if you're like sitting there relaxing in a, in a hot tub and you're drinking and you stand up and like the air just kind of hits you you get so lightheaded yeah you're not yeah. supposed to be drinking in a hot tub yeah well that's dumb yeah that's a stupid rule yeah they always <laughs> tell you they tell you not to drink in a hot tub right because you, you base you the, the mixture of the alcohol mm-hmm. in your bloodstream plus all the right. hot water will definitely fuck you yeah. up yeah and you know what it else what else it does is brings fun <laughs> that's true um, that's cool, man. Did, uh, did anybody get murdered? No, not, not that I know of. They said that they were going to, we, we were going to come back that morning and they said that they would like, you know, they were like, oh, we'll probably see you cause we'll, we're probably going to be back. But it looks like they were pretty wasted. Mm-hmm. So they're like, you know, drive, you know, they, they left and, you know, got, got their clothes on and like, you know, left. Um, we went the next morning and there were other people <laughs> who were naked, <laughs> But uh, it wasn't the same. It, was, it wasn't the same group. So there were an old, they were probably older, not not. No, a- they're not. Like it's so weird because all these like hot women go to the hot like, go to the hot springs and they just like get naked. Yeah, they just like let them loose and like. So here's the thing. We that's not the only hot spring we went to. We went to a hot spring that was uh, a little closer. Mm-hmm. It was about like four hours away from here. Um, here being like North Hollywood and Burbank. Um, so we drove up and like uh, they were just there. It, it was like sort of like, you know, it's in the middle of like sort of a deserty area. Uh, Cotterman said they had a lot of like uh, like cows there because they were all grazing. But like when we got there, there was no cows, but there was definitely a lot of cow pies. Um, and so like there are these different like rock formations with like, you know, hot springs there. So we like start relaxing. That was that was on the way up. And then like we got back in the car and decided to go to our destination. But on the way back, we stopped by you know, both places, that one in particular. And uh, I was just like, oh, you know what? This is probably the family-friendly one. And then as I'm just sitting there, like like three girls, like, go up, come up to the hot spring, take their tops off, and just boop, go back, go in. I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know. Do people think this is like a bath they're taking? No, it's it's just like that's that's how people like to go and do their hot spring. It's like I've, I've known plenty of people who, like, have jacuzzis, and they said that they love to do, like, jacuzzi while they're you know naked rather than having a swimsuit i like having a swimsuit on just you know in case you get a boner yeah exactly uh so yeah like and not after not <laughs> like two seconds after that three more <laughs> girls show up take off their top and then like whoop go go right in none of the dudes took off their you know their like, bottoms their bottoms but most of the girls were just like they like going topless and just kind of you should have been fuck it yeah i'm, I'm going bottom bottomless nah <laughs> That wouldn't be a disaster. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> That's my boner. Yeah. Hashtag me too. What? I don't <laughs> understand all these damn hashtags. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I just went to the housewarming in the in the wedding. Oh, Where did the anyone wedding? take off their top? No, um, no. Unfortunately, nobody took off their top. Right. No, the wedding was actually really nice. Um, we felt bad though. Uh, you know, my wife was my was went as my guest, obviously. Um. We felt bad though for the bride because um, we went to the <laughs> we went to the rehearsal. We went, went to my buddy's wedding. I yeah. felt bad. <laughs> well, I felt, we felt bad for like because it rained. Oh, that sucks. It, it was in Long Beach and it yeah. rained. So here's the thing: we went to the rehearsal dinner, and the rehearsal dinner was well, it wasn't even a rehearsal dinner. It was just a rehearsal. So we were hungry as fuck. Yeah. But we went to the rehearsal on Thursday night because I guess they don't do rehearsal dinner Friday night because it's at a, at like a restaurant. Right? All right. It's it's it's. And uh, so we went to the rehearsal and it was kind of cloudy, but it was a really nice view because what it is, it's, it's, it's on the Long Beach Pier uh, right next to the Queen Mary. And where they were going to have the ceremony was on the roof. And it was actually a really, really nice view because it was the view of, you know, the pier, the Queen Mary, but also the Long Beach um, Pier. Like you can see the aquarium and all that shit there. Right. right? Really, really great, gorgeous view. The day of the wedding, <laughs> the morning we get up. Me and my wife look at you and it's like, it's fucking raining outside. Yeah, yeah. And we checked. This was last it, week, right? This was, yeah, this yeah. was last week. And it was raining in Long Beach. Yeah. So we ended up driving down there and, um, yeah, it was raining. And they brought, they brought everything in. Yeah. Um, I have to actually give the uh, venue a hand because they brought everything in and did a good job. But it was just like, <laughs> we felt better like, 
we're like, I wonder how much money you guys paid to have it outside on the roof, <laughs> and it rained. Like, that sucked. But they better they get a, their deposit back. Uh, they had a good time. I mean, they loved it. Uh, you know, it was really nice. Um, it, it was it was a nice change of pace. Uh, right. I kind of made a decision after that, though. I'm no longer ever participating in another wedding again. I'm just going to go as a guest. Well. <laughs> the only time I'll partic- participate in a wedding is if it's somebody really, really close to me. Right. Um, but otherwise, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done participating in weddings. This will be like the second wedding you participate in, right? Or yeah, this yeah. is the second wedding I participate. This is right. this has to be like the fourth wedding I've been in. I've g- been to. Um, I think I've been actually t- only two where I've been part of like the groom, the part, the groom's party. I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving let's on. That's our on. life talk. Yeah, that's our life talk. Real, real um, life talk. So there's a game coming out. It's a it's a by this indie developer I forgot what they're called but it's called Assassin's Creed Odyssey. <laughs> it's uh the it's sequel to Abe's Odyssey. It's already out October second when it came out. It's a sequel to uh, uh, Abe's Odyssey. It's Hom- World. Hom- Hom- Homer's Iliad Odyssey. <laughs> yeah, Homer's Iliad. Odyssey. This is time, this time, yeah. you're th- this time the Odyssey is within right. you. Again, this the the game is not historically accurate in any ways because it's like a simulation or some some weird thing like that right wait no am i thinking of the right no no you're right you're right okay yeah so none of this is historically accurate uh all of it is though yeah it's all historical it's it it happens exactly how it happened in real life oh really in history (sighs) it's directed by frank miller frank miller yeah no it's not oh Oh, i was gonna say so then it sucks it's a bunch of (laughs) it's a bunch of spartans (laughs) yelling at each other Spartans yelling for Sparta and all this other stuff. So, have you played the game? Yeah, I'm actually really, really into it right now. Right. Uh, I've, I've, I actually finished this game after Spider Man. We didn't really talk about Spider. Wait, did we talk about? We, d- we did talk about. Okay, Spider-Man. we talked about. Yeah, I told so you like, I hate the costumes. Yeah, you hate the costumes. Yeah. So I, I actually um, started playing this right after Spider Man. I actually took a break on Destiny Two for quite a bit because I want to play all these single player games that are coming out. Um, I'm playing this right now. I'm trying to finish it up before the big, big release comes out next Friday, which right. is Red Dead Redemption 2, and we'll talk about that next show. But uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the next entry in the Assassin's Creed franchise. I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna just say this off the bat. This probably has to be the best entry of Assassin's Creed I've played because they essentially l- looked at it and they're like, you know what? Everybody likes playing the the um, the historical gameplay and yeah. they hate the future so let's just do no more future or let's keep it the bare minimum and so far they've kept it at the bare minimum like legitimately the game starts off with you being in ancient greece yeah and i've only run into one segment where it's in the future and it was very very brief you pretty much get out of the animus get back in animus and you're done <laughs> Um, you so take a bathroom break, basically. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's actually actually it's funny <laughs> you say that because it actually happens in the right. s- in the segment. Um, so for those of you guys who don't know, the Assassin's Creed series is this long running series by Ubisoft. Um, you're essentially somebody who sits in this device called the Animus that lets you relive people's memories through their DNA. Um, and this chapter, it's a continuation of Assassin's Creed Origins. So you're playing as um, either uh, one of the two siblings. Um, but in the future, you're this person named Layla Hassan. Mm-hmm. She is a character from Assassin's Creed Origins. Uh, that's where they introduced her. So you're continuing her journey. But nobody really cares about that because they want to just play all the all the ancient like Greece stuff. Greece stuff um, yeah. In this game, you can actually pick to be either be uh, the brother or the sister. You can either be a male or female. Um, I haven't played as a brother, but I've been reading a lot of articles and a lot of impressions that. Um, similar to how they dealt, how the original Mass Effect trilogy was, the voice acting isn't that great for the male. So they're like, you're better off going with the female because she f- comes off a lot more natural and she's funnier and more like, she's a lot more interesting. Mm. Um, so far, it's great. Um, I think the reason why I like this game is they actually really got away from the whole, you know, perfect sync. Like you have to do everything stealthy or you have to do everything perfect because that's how it's supposed to be and. It, rem- it it just brings up this quote that the guy who cre- who was the main like head of the series before saying like, oh we treat these games as like a VCR tape so you can't deviate from a VCR you're just pressing play you can fast forward and rewind but you can't deviate they and use like <laughs> they use VCR as a uh, metaphor? yeah yeah it was like a metaphor that you right. was like that sounds dumb so they did away with that you can be sneaky you can fight people all out you want or you can use a bow and arrow oh. um. 
this game really just comes down to almost like an action RPG or more RPG like. Uh, you know, there's skill trees, there's experience you gain. Turn based? Uh, not turn based. Thank God. Oh, that turn-based. sucks. Um, game for a bunch of barbarians who can't <laughs> think. Exactly like me. Duh. I just want to. I just want to stab. Press dude. button. Hit I just stuff with fear. I just want to stab dudes uh, in the face. Okay. Just press this X button and it does everything. <laughs> That's true. Actually, that the X button does do a lot, and this mm. it's actually fun. Um, so they made it made more RPG like, like I said, their skill trees and everything. But um, so far this game's great. Um, you know, I I really can't. You really have to get a hold of the gameplay yourself. You really gotta play it because it's very visceral combat. It's really fun. There's a lot of stuff to do. Obviously, it's open world. Um, some of the side missions are really interesting. Some of them are like whatever. But the funnest thing to do is just stabbing dudes in the face. All right. Um, one of my favorite things you can do in this game though is you get the Spartan kick. You it's exactly what it sounds like you just kick like the dude from 300 you don't yell when you do it but you can kick people the sweetest thing about that is you can kick people off cliffs right so for example they have this mercenary system in the game where if you cause enough trouble they send bounty hunters after you now a lot of these times the bounty hunters are either at your level or two levels higher uh you can quickly kill these higher level bounty hunters by just kicking off a cliff so a lot of times they'll come after me I'll lead them to a cliff. I'll turn around and I'll just kick them off the cliff. They fall. Oh. They die instantly. So there we go. That's a that's using strategy to defeat someone there higher you go. Uh, has a higher level. See, See? that's totally. um somewhat similar to what I would do in like you know some RPGs where I would fight people tougher than me. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was that one thing? Um, yeah, like where in, you can do an environment kill rather than just like trying to like battle them straight up. Yeah. Uh, that's always fun. Like yeah, I like I like games that do that because then yeah. like it makes sense so that like you know you're not the the only way you can beat this pre- people if you buy if you beat twenty three thousand weaker characters exactly. that increases your experience. Yeah, and then another cool thing you can do is like let's say you go into a camp and you yeah. gotta ri- you gotta uh, you want to you have to clear out this camp. Mm-hmm. Um, some of these camps have like animal cages. Yeah, so you can let loose like a bear that they have trapped and it'll kill a bunch of the guys your s- themselves, but then they'll kill the bear. So they pretty much kind of like thins out the numbers. Um, so there's a lot of cool things you can do this game. Uh, my biggest gripe with this game, though, it seems like there's it's a lot more than the current generation consoles can handle. Oh. Uh, my PS4 seems to kind of be struggling with it a little bit, maybe because I need to clean my PS4. Is it making that noise? <laughs> it's not, uh, well, my PS4 always does that. And yeah. the thing is, my PS4 is probably one of the earlier, like not launch model, but probably like the next set that were manufactured. So... Um, I don't, I don't, I, I, I think we're kind of hitting the limits of what these systems can do now. Yeah. Again, uh, I'm sure this is not a problem on the PC because uh, you know PCs can handle so much more. Um, as long as you have the right equipment in the e- PC. Exactly, and the money. Um, I mean, still, it doesn't cut from the enjoyment. It's still fun, but there's a lot of longer load screens. I mean, even going into the pause menu, there's a load screen. Which oh really? Is, yeah, it kind of sucks. Um, it actually does really suck. There's a wait period f- it's, for it's, you to pee. It, it's like you press start mm-hmm. and it and it to finally load into the screen. It takes a good probably like 10, 15 seconds. I see. So I just think there's a lot to this game going on, and I think, like I said, the current generation systems can't really handle it all that well. Could also be that my system needs to be cleaned. <laughs> Maybe I got a bunch of just dust in there. Grab and it's like an air can. And just that's what I'm thinking. Out, yeah. um, but so far, I would if you if no if you didn't like any of the Assassin's Creed games before, I would say definitely check this out because it is the most fun, probably the most fun mechanically of all the other Assassin's Creed. Like that thing right there where There's he just kicked kick, them. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. You can just kick dudes off cliffs, like literally just kick them off the cliff. Like it's fucking, it's fun. It's really fun. Uh, there's also naval battles, which are really actually really interesting. Um, the thing that they did this time with the naval battles, you can actually board ships. So if you if you weaken the opposing ship enough, you get a prompt to board them, and then so you can just jump onto their ship and fight them hand to hand and kill them. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's actually a really cool game, really big. It's taking me quite a bit to finish this. Um, I don't even know I'm halfway through. I might be halfway through. I don't know. I've been playing this a lot, but yeah, mechanically, most fun game I've had so far. Um, check it out, definitely. Kick people in the face. I'm not going to check it out. Don't check it out, then. It looks lame. <laughs> Just maybe. I don't know. I, I don't check out new games. I know. Uh, I check them out for us. We'll, uh, we'll, check, we'll move on here to uh, a couple of movies that are somewhat related. 
Um, we're going to do uh, Night Comes for Us, which uh, is a Netflix film. Mm-hmm. And it stars uh, one of the uh, actors from uh, The Raid Redemption and The Raid Redemption 2. But um, yeah. uh, I- Iku. Iku Uwaz? Yeah. Yeah, Iku Uwaz is in it. And then the star of the film is actually, he was in the first in the first Raid movie. <sighs> I forgot his name already. I knew his name. The I guy who plays the Beast? No, he he plays. Um, no, he plays is actually his cop buddy, the one who gets killed by the. Oh, the beast. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Dang it! In the in the movie, he's called Ito. Uh, uh, Iku Joe Tas- Taslim. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Joe so Taslim. it stars Joe Tas- Taslim. Yeah. And uh, Iko Uwaz. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Um, both you might remember you remember them from the raid, like Chuck and Dice said. Yeah, the having the raid having like the most superb fight scenes yeah. ever. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This this starts off. The premise of this is um. Uh, sorry. What was the guy? The guy's name? Joe. 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 Uh, Tassim. Joe Tassim. Yeah. He is a. Uh, special, special member of the triads. He's actually like a special elite unit called the Six C's or the Six C's or Seven C's. I think six C's. Uh, and I- essentially, he's almost like an elite fighter in the uh, triad. And uh, during one of his r- most recent, uh, I would say, kind of like, uh, I wouldn't say rampages, but kind of like a retribution killing spree, he comes upon a girl who he hesitates to kill. Right. Uh, he doesn't kill her, and he essentially makes a decision to get out of the triads. And that starts his long chain of events. That leads him up to everything that goes on in that movie and him facing his uh, his uh, former friend. Or, well, I'll say former. I guess they were really good friends, childhood friends. Yeah. But uh, this movie's great. Uh, I actually watched this last night. Uh, everyone is talking about this movie mainly because of the fight scenes. Um, the fight scenes are incredible. Uh, it's a very, very gory and bloody movie. Um, they pull no punches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would say the fight choreography isn't as quick as it is in the raid movies. Right. Um, they do have some really nice, incredible fights, but I think where it really shines is actually the c- the cinematography and the camera angles. Um, some of the shots they do. I mean, people have been watching this movie nonstop, like rewinding shots to see how they did it, because they have some really incredible, um, you know incredible camera work and sh- and things like that. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a film student. I don't really know film, but um y- I mean, you watched The Raid too, yeah. and The Raid had some really nice shots and things oh like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, um I think this is actually even m- even more more like I think this is even crazier. Um the other thing I wanted to comment on and I haven't really seen too many people comment on is the soundtrack. It's very 80s uh synth like kind of those 80s Kind of like a retro feel. Yeah, like a retro feel, kind of like mm-hmm. 80s thriller action movie, like uh, almost possibly kind of a hint of, of horror. Um, what was the, there wasn't there a movie recently that kind of had that kind of retro 80s synth music too? I think It Follows uh, had that. It Follows had it. Uh, House of the Devil had it. Like uh, Like a newer film. I, yeah. guess, I guess Stranger Things. Stranger it, Things. Yeah. So if you like that whole like kind of '80s yeah. retro synth like pop and rock, mm-hmm. or like that very kind of, um, the Void didn't the Void kind of oh, have the, it? Yeah, the Void did have it. Yeah. So if you like that, this movie definitely has a great soundtrack. Yeah. Really, really kind of in that vein. The um, Void leans towards uh, the John Carpenter style. Yeah. So um. So this this is very very. I mean, y- this movie is like just crazy in general. Um. Very enjoyable. Uh, I think the story in general is 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 good. Um, I mean, it's kind of your typical gangster uh, flick, um, but I think a lot of praise has been heaped on the action and the and the uh, kind of gore and things like that. Um, but I mean, action. W- I mean, acting wise, I think they do a pretty good pretty good job on. But again, it's in Indonesia. They it's in Indonesia mm-hmm. or Indonesian. So you got to watch it subtitled. So you got to watch it subtitled. They do speak some English in it, but not mm-hmm. a lot. Um, but still. I think a lot of really strong performances. Um, you can tell these guys; these guys know their stuff. Uh, is it is it a very long film, or is it? Because uh, uh, the Raid Two was really long. 
You know what? You know how well. Not that it was a bad film. It was a great film. So you know how you know how there's those films that you that are tend to be very long, but mm-hmm. because they're so enjoyable, you really don't make note of the length. Yeah, it I just kind of moves fast. I, I think yeah. this is kind of how it is as yeah. well. It, it's it's a very long movie, but it moves you know fairly quickly. Um, I will say there is a scene where three women who fight each other, yeah, or one uh, two women against one. And it's r- really really great. They have a lot of your great choreography oh, so in that. So like it's that scene from like uh the raid where it was the two guys fighting the beast. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's really, really good. I mean, I would definitely check this movie out. Um, if you're a fan of The Raid yeah. or The Raid 2, or you're in general you're just a fan of, of action movies, you know, not a lot of guns, but a lot of martial arts, things like that, i say definitely check it out. Yeah, so this is on Netflix, guys, so if you want to catch it, you can just, if you have a Netflix subscription, you just turn it on. So, do it. I think they are talking about releasing this on Blu-ray, though, at some point. Right. Well, no, they, they'll, they'll probably will, because, yeah. you know, they, that's what they do with all all the Amazon movies and all the Netflix movies. They, they tend to do that. And definitely check it out, because the, 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 the director of this movie definitely said that um, the more and more exposure he gets and the more feedback, and essentially the more, uh, depending on the success, because he, he has an entire trilogy lined up for this. Uh. So the, the more of a success, the more we'll get better more chance we'll see the other yeah. two films. All right. So uh, now we're mo- we're going to transition to another film that is also released on Netflix, and this is related because it's not just only on Netflix, but it was actually directed by the person who directed the raid, Gareth Evans. It's called The Apostle. It's a little bit different than um, I mean, it's a lot different from the raid. <laughs> it has nothing to do with martial arts, um, and I think it's kind of Gareth Evans kind of trying to show his directing chops and how uh, he he basically doesn't want to be pigeonholed as an action director maybe because he's already done two raid films and they've done really well the only other film that i kind of remember him doing was a little segment on vhs2 which actually did have the actors from the raid in it and uh it was more of like a horror kind of cult this is also very similar in theme it actually has to do with a cult it has to do with a um a uh a character who is a person played by, I think it was Dan Stevens. Is that his name? Yeah, Dan Stevens. Um, who plays a character named Thomas. And he's searching for his sister because his sister was kidnapped by this cult. And now they're holding her for ransom. It takes place in a, I think I think it's 19th century. Uh, or at least early 20th century. Um, they have steamboats and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, trains, so somewhere where steam power <laughs> exists. Uh, and the this cult is just on this island. And, like, basically he goes there and a lot of bizarre things happen. Like, he notices that, like, everyone there will, you know, go to their rooms. You know, I guess it's m- like a kind of a Scientology or Nexium thing. They just kind of go to their rooms and just, like, you know, after hours... And then some of them have to, like, give blood, and they put bottles of blood outside their door. He, of course, doesn't want to do that, so he just kind of takes his empty bottle and pours a little bit of blood, f- you know, from another bottle and j- to make it look like that he, you know, gave blood. But um, more and more, you, like, peel more and more layers from this film, and you get to the center, and uh, the movie is a lot more, like, has to do with fantasy. I mean, it still has to do with horror, but it has to do with fantasy than, I would say, realism, and in, in a good way. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It is a bit of a long film. It's about two hours and ten minutes. Uh, it's a little bit of a slow burn, but I think it's ca- sort of one of those, it's kind of worth the wait because you're kind of wondering what's going on. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the main actor, uh, Dan, Steve- Dan Stevens, is really good in, his, in the role, um, playing this sort of like irate person of, uh, who, who had a belief of God, but uh, had lost that faith, and then all of a sudden his sister's in trouble, so he has to go and try and like find her and see and see what this cult's all about. Um, which you know is his he, he's like seeing all these people who have like you know this blind faith, and he's, he sees them as basically fools because he used to have that as well. Uh, but I would highly, highly recommend this film. Uh, again, really enjoyable horror film if you can, because I actually uh, caught this in a theater. The sound design is excellent here. Uh, speaking of soundtracks, this is a good film that has a really good soundtrack, but it also has really great sound design. Um, and hearing that in a theater rather than you know from your television is a little bit you know it, it's really worth it. 
But uh, I think you would actually enjoy this because it does have that HP Lovecraft kind of touch to it as well. Um, trying to figure out what's going on and then finally finding out what truly is the evil behind all of this. Uh, this this sounds a lot like uh, w- a movie on Netflix I saw the other day as well because I'm I'm yeah. currently going through like uh, all the horror movies. I'm, yeah, for for October I'm going through a bunch of horror movies because uh, I saw a few lists come out saying like you know one of them especially was a list of horror movies that nobody that you probably never never watched. Yeah. Um, and one of them I caught was The Wailing, um, and it's a South Korean film. Um, it's very reminiscent of uh, Memories of Murder and True Blood. Uh, not True Blood, True, True Detective, the first season. Yeah. Um, it's got a lot of... I like how you said the first season because n- no one likes the second <laughs> season. You know what? Nobody likes the second season. I don't but like I, the second I, season. I, ca- I ha- kind of have a soft spot for the sef- yeah. second season because I can see the potential in it, and I also like noir noir stories, yeah. but especially L.A. noir stories, but that's just me. But, um, yes, the first season. <laughs> um, the Wailing, and it sounds it, it actually sounds a lot like The Wailing because The Wailing is actually a very very long film, right. but um, because so many so many things just kind of escalate and happened, you're you're constantly like pushing yourself to watch the rest of it because you really want to know what's going on. Exactly, and it yeah. also it's 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 also similar to this where there's like a mystery going on. Um, there's this guy who's trying to find out. Same thing. Um, great effects great creepy atmosphere um i definitely want to watch this is uh, on my list of things to watch so um and i actually really like dan stevens a lot uh yeah. i thought he was great in um i never watched th- downton abbey so i don't really know him from that i didn't watch yeah. him from i didn't watch him that i did watch him in legion and i also liked him a lot in uh the guest oh yeah he was in that uh, movie, yeah. which was great um you know another great movie so i'll definitely probably check this out tonight yep it's a it's a really fun like not fun but like I don't know it's it's a really great film I had a lot of fun watching it mm. it's it's got so, you know some grueling terror in it that's you know you could say reminiscent of like torture porn but I don't think it's really exactly does like it that. have that kind of the that really kind of uh, suspenseful anxiety induced yeah like, it, it definitely like does you're like what the fuck yeah. is going like like really come on like yeah. you're really gonna do this to me like what the fuck what is going th- on like this is well, really do you do you remember the time? Like, I remember in uh, I think Shawshank Redemption, where Andy Dufresne goes through all that shit. Yeah, like, he basically goes through shit. Like two football, f- like yeah. it's like what does Red say? Like two or three football fields, fields worth of, of shit. shit. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much. There's a scene like that. Really, it's gross. Okay. Yeah, because you can see like you know, old shit like you know, passing by and stuff, and like it's disgusting. Makes you feel you like you're there. Did you take a shower right after you mm-hmm. watched the scene? Uh, no, I. I just uh, I that turned me on. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it! You were eating a bunch of Taco Bell yeah. when you were watching. I was like, oh yeah, this is great. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, it's really great. It's on Netflix, guys. Again, if you have a subscription, just go ahead and watch it. It's all there. Net- Netflix has free stuff for you. I mean, it's not free because you pay for Netflix. Was it yeah. a limited release in theaters? It was a limited. It was only at the one theater. It, like it's the the Lemley Seven Theater in NoHo is the only place that was showing it. Me and my friend Jorge, we wanted to go check it out because, you know, we, we kind of dig watching movies in, like, you know, in big theaters. Uh, particularly because sound design is kind of something that's really, you know, important to horror films. So we decided, like, yeah, let's let's go check it out. And Lemley 7 NoHo Theater is a great theater. Sometimes it can be a little pretentious because it has these little art shows that happen. Um, is that the one we saw at Shin Godzilla in? Yeah, Shin, Shin Godzilla, we, we saw that. They show they show films that are international. They show films that don't normally come out in theaters, like wide release. But they also show wide release movies. Like, for example, I saw The Nun there, uh, which uh, I think we talked about this, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I didn't like it because it ripped off Demon Knight. Yeah, the you said the last, the end of it. The end of you it. Said, you said you enjoyed it until I the end it of it, because yeah. it definitely ripped off Demon Eye at the very end. Yeah, I'm like, this is like, how? Why, why would you? Ruin it's funny did like you say yeah. that that you said the Lamley, the Lamley is uh, uh, kind of pretentious because when yeah. we saw when we saw Shin Gojira there, mm-hmm. uh, uh, there was definitely an air of pretentiousness. Yeah, like definitely. It w- yeah. I liked it because there was there was people there who were genuine kaiju fans, yeah. and I liked hearing them talk about it. But then there was also a very vocal number of people who were per- very very pretentious and mm. like film school student like and i just kept rolling my eyes i was like rolling right. my eyes so hard they almost came out of my skull well yeah like, there's there's there were plenty of theaters that like there's plenty of theaters in in all of uh los angeles that there's fun theaters like the new bev which is owned by um uh, quentin tarantino and uh, uh the guy who directed uh feast i think 
John something or other. Uh, John Gulliger, that's his name. Um, that's a great theater because they show all these, like, you know, grindhouse films and stuff like that. They show, like, awesome movies at midnight. They show the art house films as well. But um, most of the time, you know, it's a it's just people who want to check out a really good show. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Gulliger's uh, father, Clue Gulliger, who is uh, Bert from uh, Return of the Living Dead, the guy who owns the, uh, the cadaver shop. Mm-hmm. Um, he goes there every day to watch films. He can't go right now because they shut down the f- the, s- the theater for renovations, so it's going to be closed and y- for an undetermined amount of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember watching *Demone* or *Demons* by uh, Lamberto Bava there for free uh, because they were about to go to go through another uh, through a renovation and like you know fix the seats because the seats were terrible there the, mm. se- the seats had like metal sticking Sh- out and yeah. poking to your body and stuff like that that sucks uh um, someone's gonna get it someone need you need a you yeah. ne- essentially need a tetanus shot yeah after. you need a tetanus shot afterwards and like they they gave out money for free and and or i'm sorry they sh- they showed this movie for free which is funny because the movie demons is about watching a, mo- a horror movie for free <laughs> and then, and then someone turns into a demon, and starts killing, and every time he kills a person, they turn into a demon. They turn. It's like a zombie film. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw uh, what's it called, uh, the wizard there, and it had uh, Jimmy, uh, the guy, the kid who played Jimmy there, mm-hmm. and the director, and um, I think the, e- I think it was the editor. They couldn't get Fred Savage. They could not get Fred Savage. Fred Savage actually wanted to be there, but he couldn't because he had a he had a previous engagement. So Jimmy Woods was there. Uh, the guy who introduced it, uh, the host, had a power glove on. Uh, that was a fun show. That was a real fun show because the director was, you know, he he knew what kind of film it was, and like you know, he, he said he, like he it's a, it's a real silly film about Nintendo, but you guys, you kids gr- grew up with Nintendo, so you know, I realize it's not the best film in the world, but I'm glad you're here because it was a packed house. A lot of people were like chomping at the bit to watch this and film. i'm sure the i'm sure the guy was like yeah. i didn't expect people to love it so much yeah he was like actually really surprised and really touched about how many people were there i was like i guys this is great i really love you guys thank you for coming i didn't think anyone would show up and there was a line around the around the block basically trying to get into the theater uh that was a great show uh the other the other one um that usually shows stuff is the arrow and the egyptian the era, the Egyptian, I I would say is the more pretentious crowd. The Arrow is sort of that way too, only, but there's certain nights where it's not. What about the new art? Uh, the new art's okay. I mean, the new art has the uh, what's it called, the Rocky Horror Picture Show crowd. They do that every Friday or Saturday. I forgot which day, but like everyone still goes to that. I don't like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and I really don't like you know the Rocky Horror Picture Show crowd because typically that's the crowd, and I'm not saying th- about everyone. But typically, that's the crowd that does that one cult thing and then just fucking shuts out all the other cult things that are out there. They could they could give a shit about like Night of the Living Dead or Evil Dead or anything you know with the word dead in it. Yeah, I really liked the new. I really liked the new art. My only problem yeah. with the new art though is in the fucking West Side. It is, which yeah. is a fucking pain. It's, in a, the it's ass. a pain in the ass to get to, and there's uh, never any parking. Yeah. And it's it's just fucking horrible. Right. Well, oh, I, the midnight showings are usually yeah. are a little better. So the midnight showings were too yeah. bad. Um, they I actually s- got really because when I first started going to New York, yeah. the New York, uh, their midnight showings were popular, but not as popular. And then as time went on, they got bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, that's actually where I saw. We talked about this. My name is Bruce. Yeah, my name is Bruce. And then you said you were also there, so we must have been in the same theater. Yeah. We just didn't know each other. Um, just gonna throw some filler right now. I also saw. Um, Do you sell toys? It we was sell great. forbidden we objects the, from we, places. Uh, I went with a buddy of mine, and he, his girl, his his ex girlfriend met us there. Yeah. Uh, we were supposed to watch. They were supposed to show um, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode, the Once More with the Feeling. Oh, the musical. Yeah. And Fox sent a cease and desist and told him no. Yeah. So they ended up showing um, Serenity. The movie. The movie. Yeah. Serenity. The movie. And I I always liked that movie, uh, and it was great. Uh, and my f- friend and his ex girlfriend went to Seven Eleven and got drunk off of wine coolers <laughs> that they snuck in. <laughs> wine coolers, dude? No, was it? No, you know, was it, no, it wasn't wine coolers. It was like little liquor bottles, oh, like okay. airplane bottles. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. And dude, they were fucking wasted. Like by the end of the movie, I was like, holy shit! How much did you guys drink? Um, she was actually really cool. Uh, she she was I think she, she was Salvadorian and. We were basically talking shit about him in Spanish, <laughs> uh, but it was fun. 
it's fine because they got fucking wasted. But yeah. the new art, yeah, the new it's in the yeah. fucking west side. The west side. It's 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 a fucking pain in the ass. So one of my favorite one was uh, the Cine Family, which is a silent movie theater off of uh, Fairfax, and they closed down because uh, there was a lot of like uh, claims of sexual harassment. Uh, so the, per- the by the person in charge of oh. the uh, programming, and like then he stepped down, and then there was like a loss of faith of the entire board there. So basically, they shut down indefinitely. My friend uh, Jorge, uh, who you know we went to go see um, uh, the Apostle, he had a what's called a it was called a black card, and basically he could watch uh, their special engagement movies for free with like two guests, and like we went there all the time watching these like sort of like you know movies that would show at midnight. We saw uh, the autopsy of Jane Doe there. Uh, great movie, and yeah, it's a I great film. I think yeah. it's a great movie up until the end. Yeah, I um, kind of didn't care. I, for it. I I liked it because it was like sort of like a uh, procedural J horror animation. Mm. Or, I'm sorry, not J horror animation. J horror movie mm. that um, I love that. Uh, the J horror movie that actually uh, m- made a little bit more sense than like your typical J horror film. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a. Uh, it was a great theater. Unfortunately, it got caught up with <laughs> a bunch of shit. Yeah, the the allegations of sexual harassment and stuff like that, and there's like you know, uh, I think I heard about this. I think yeah. I remember reading an article about that. Mm-hmm. And it, 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 it's a pity because it was it was a great theater, uh, but unfortunately, you know, mired in controversy. People can't fucking keep to themselves. I guess not. People I'm can't fucking behave. Yeah. Um, I think there's I think something like that was gonna happen to the Alamo. The, uh, the, the draft, draft house? house, yeah, well, they're still around. Te- though. They're, they're still around, yeah. but but apparently there's been kind of like a lot of people. Um, yeah, I heard about petitioning that. because I guess the current owner like yeah has kind of uh, enabled or let people who like well, I think Harry Knowles got caught up with that too. Oh really? Yeah, I remember I read an article where there there was a, a, a she was a manager of their PR or she worked she essentially worked for that company, but uh, there was a patron that they had who like was constantly harassing mm-hmm. like women and could have been Harry Knowles. And I guess it was one of those <laughs> yeah. one of those it was a patron who yeah. um was disabled. Oh. Um so it was kind of like a it was one of those things where like nobody wanted to do anything but he was like crossed a lot of lines. Mm-hmm. And uh I felt really bad for this this woman because when she was telling her story she's like they renovated and they decided to paint a huge mural of all their like, like really loyal patrons, and she's like my harassers on the mural. Wow! Ah. And so now I can never go there because I can see his fucking face there all the time. And I was like, that sounds fucking horrible. Yeah. But uh, uh, I guess the current they're trying to trying to settle that as well. Yeah, like uh, in terms of like like sort of the theaters. I mean, they're not showing as much as they used to this year, at least. With the new Bev down, with the Cine family down, you have the two Cinetech theaters, but again, they're pretentious and they won't show anything. The Arrow's going to do their all night dust till dawn thing. They always do that every year. Uh, I stopped going to those because um, you're not you're not young anymore. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean that could be one thing. Also, they they really haven't been showing anything they really wanted to watch. Are you like Danny Glover? You too yeah. old for this shit? I'm too old for this shit. Um, but uh, I mean, if they if you know if there's like a theater that's going to be showing like Night of the Creeps, I'll go and watch Night of the Creeps. Uh, I can watch that movie all the time. Um, what if uh, what if somebody show decides to show Gremlins one and two? Eh. Uh, you know, I saw those as kids. I don't really need to. <laughs> I also own them. I don't, I own neither creeps though. So who knows? Uh, I definitely am gonna go check out the new Halloween though on Halloween. You're gonna die. 2018. Don't die. It's not cursed. Uh, let's move on here. So y- speaking of Halloween, on Halloween you will be playing. PT yet again. I will be doing and my uh, yearly PT yeah, stream. You're gonna stop right when it gets interesting. Exactly. I'm gonna fucking get yeah. too scared, and yeah. I'm not gonna be able to finish it. I'm actually determined to finish it this year. Right. I'm finally determined to finish this year. Who knows when I'm gonna do it? I would really love someone to like join me and and provide a walkthrough, like oh. do this, do this, do this. Because we actually, actually, the last year we did it, I got stuck. I kept going around circles. Which you have to do the entire game. Well, that's, that's the but entire I, game is going around in circles. Yeah, but I so. couldn't find out what to do. I was right. missing like a, a few pieces of the picture to advance. Right. And I couldn't figure it out. But yeah, it was really fucking uh, creepy. Well, you should you should do this. You should play this game and then as a backup, play another like I guess horror themed game. Something shorter, maybe. 
like you know something maybe for free because you're never gonna finish this thing. <laughs> uh yeah, I'm never gonna finish this yeah. thing. If uh I think what I might play as a backup is I might actually play like um I don't know ma- maybe Resident Evil Four. Oh four, I own yeah. that. Or something. Yeah, I I just beat. Uh, or just play Red Dead. <laughs> I beat Resident Evil 4 recently, and now I'm playing through it again with, like, you know, because I want to get the, you know, the better weapons and stuff like are you, that. Are you excited for Res- the Resident Evil 2 I in, am. in January? I am. That's probably the one that I'm the most excited about because it looks really cool. It, it uses the same engine as RE7, except it's, ov- you know, over the shoulder. Over the shoulder. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, that game. I, st- I played that game recently, the, the, the original PlayStation version, and uh, still had a lot of fun playing it. Uh, admittingly, nowadays I like going through it a little faster. Um, so I turn on the what's it called that one cheat where you get the infinite am- ammo. In- infinite ammo, and I just yeah. what I do is I only carry one gun with me. It's the Magnum. Um, or I'm sorry, the Desert Eagle. Is that it? Yeah, the yeah, Desert the Eagle. The Desert Eagle. And like I still, I'll no, they call it the, they call it the Magnum. They call it the Magnum. Yeah, they okay. call it the Magnum in the Resident Evil. Yeah, yeah, admittingly, I still get killed because like you know if you if you're not fast enough, you'll, and the zombies will f- like mob you or those stinking. What's it called? Those hunters? Yeah, the uh, hunters are pretty gnarly. Uh, well, not, well, maybe they're not no, hunters. You're not thinking the, of the, liquors? the liquors, yeah, the, the liquors. liquors are pretty fast. I hate those freaking. The things. liquors are fast, and, I, yeah. and I, it's funny. I've been actually, and it's it's annoying because you have to point down to shoot them. Yeah, yeah. So it sucks. Um, yeah, I won't do it with like the chain gun because that's too easy. You just have to kill everything off camera at that point. Yeah, I was playing. I was. I've been playing that lately too, and I've been playing as Claire first, and yeah. I realized how how much harder it is with Claire because it is. Yeah. She has less inventory. She doesn't have. She doesn't have the, the magnum. L- she has the the grenade launcher. Yeah, which which actually is a shitty gun. It is. It doesn't go far. No, and and even with the acid rounds, it's still yeah. a shitty gun. Like, yeah. she doesn't have anything powerful. I like I like the crossbow for her. The crossbow is okay, yeah. but I know what I've noticed is uh, usually if I do Claire, I always give her the submachine gun. Yeah, me too. I do the submachine gun. And give Leon the pack. Yeah, me too. Although I almost think that she should take both items because she also has shit inventory. Like. She has to carry a lot around a lot more stuff. Uh, does she? I mean, Leon has to carry. But if you do the infinite ammo thing, just carry one thing. The shotgun. There you go. Well, with Leon, yeah. Not yeah. with Claire. She doesn't have a shotgun. Oh, she doesn't? Her shotgun is a crossbow. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I think I what I do is I carry, like, the grenade launcher. Or I carry the, uh, the, yeah, the submachine gun. Yeah. She can still get the flamethrower, right? Yeah, she can still get uh. the flamethrower. Um. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah, me too. Uh, I want to, and I I really dig uh, Ada's new costume, the trench coat. Yeah, the trench coat with the dark sunglasses makes her look like a French spy. Um. Yeah, and then yeah, Leon, one of my favorite characters from the franchise. Claire's always been my favorite. Yeah. Claire and Jill, always always lean towards the w- the women in those series. Jill. Yeah. The master of unlocking. Yeah. The turn into a Jill sandwich. Almost turned into a Jill sandwich. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. I liked her. I like her a lot. I like uh, Barry, but you can never play as Barry. <laughs> Barry's great. Yeah. I like the way they, they I liked Barry's novel I like the novelization of Barry. Right. Because like, they always they always uh Barry's like one of those those guys that you had in high school, like big or like one of those guys who's just a big giant teddy bear, but right. you know he w- he will fucking like fuck people up if you piss him off. That's what Barry reminds me of. That's like our thing. tiny dinosaurs. Yeah. He's Barry. Barry. Where's Barry? We should get Tiny Dinosaurs uh, uh, one of those 357 Magnums. <laughs> <laughs> Make him Barry. So let's move on to another game here. Uh, this is, I just showed you this game. It is uh, called The Dark Room by John Robinson. Robinson? Yeah. Robertson. He's a comedian from Australia. He created this sort of like internet, I guess you could say YouTube game. Uh, where it's just him and he has animations and he'll he basically like he's like a dungeon master. It says like <coughs> you wake up in a dark room. What do you do? And you have these choices. You can go north. You can you know say why. You can you know do uh, you can sleep, or you can say find the light switch. Um, if you sleep, basically he'll just say you wake to find yourself in the dark room over and over again. He does this stuff live as well with participants from the crowd, and he'll press like buttons and stuff like that. He's got like a Xbox controller, and I think it's like rigged so that like it, you know, can do the choices and stuff like that, and uh, does the narration. Um, but recently, he just released a uh, Steam game based on that act, or based on the YouTube game, 
Uh, and basically, yeah, it's a, it's a video game version of himself doing the same thing. Now, it's, it's what's great about it is that this is different from the actual YouTube you know game that you find on with the antenations. Uh, right now, it's sort of in the uh, sort of the beta, and they're working out all the bugs because it does have a couple bugs here and there. I think the game's like nine ninety nine or something like that. It does have like a couple of bugs here and there because like you'll get into a dead end. Uh, just recently, when I tried to say you know restart to uh, my last checkpoint, it gave me my checkpoint from from my last game instead of the game that we just played. But it's a very basic game, and yes, it's like a choose your own adventure. But it's more about like what his what he says and the funny things that he does. It's not like her story. It's not a compelling story at all. It's just a real funny thing, like funny things that he says and stuff like that. And yeah, you'll die a lot, like a lot, a lot. And yeah, the checkpoints are usually you wake wake up in a dark room. Uh, but I like I think it's enjoyable. Uh, I'd probably wait until it gets out of this sort of beta stage and uh, this pre-order stage until like the game gets like fully developed so it doesn't f I want to say that they don't want to make it feel as repetitive but you will die a lot it's like an old text game text adventure if you've ever played that I died a lot uh, also I like some of the responses to, yeah. <laughs> to the choices uh, check pockets or check pockets one being check pockets from the Czech Republic and check pockets as in putting your hands in your pocket. What I also like too are the hints. Uh how they give you hints, but that yeah. was actually a pretty cool way to kind of figure things out. Yep. Um you find a dog in there. It's like a puppy. Oh really? Yeah. He, he says you find a puppy. Basically if you do stuff that's good in his eyes, mm -hmm. uh you'll get stuff. Oh. So should I have not grabbed that gorilla's balls? No. If you get if you grab the gorilla's balls, he even says, you know, grabbing a you know there's a gorilla grabbing his balls is a mistake. If you grab the gorilla's balls, you'll you'll die, because the gorilla will kill you. But but the pockets from from were from the Czech Republic. Yeah. So that I, at least I died happy. Yeah, you died happy. You can't screw around in the dark room, dude. <laughs> uh, I think the last thing we wanted to talk about now is uh, ROM sites. They're going away. They're done. They're almost done. Actually, guys, you can actually find. I'm not going to tell you where because I don't want them to be taken down. Nice. Why'd you put a screenshot of one then? Well, that that one's pretty much down. That's Emu oh, Paradise. Really? Yeah, that's the that's the best one or was the best one until they got shut yeah, down. Yeah, and they see. So the problem with the Emu Paradise. So as you know, Nintendo is doing this entire movement to take down all the ROM sites. You can find them if you know where to look for them. Um, but this is one of the more like I'd say the best one because it had so many different consoles. It had so many different computer games. Had a lot of Nintendo games. And Nintendo went after them. And these guys made it real easy for you to, like, load it onto your system or whatever. Uh, I, You know, I'm not going to say that I grabbed any. I grabbed some. Um, but, uh, but like, they had, it, they, had it so, they had it down so much that, like, you know how in, for if you wanted to get a uh, PSP emulated uh, game that was originally on the PSX, uh, you can't just download the ISO and put it on your PSP. You actually have to do this thing to convert it so that it works on your PSP through, you know, custom firmware and such. ME Paradise actually had a whole library of them already converted with, like, a picture and everything so that, like, a thumbnail would pop up and, like, you know, you could load up the game. Um, unfortunately, ME Paradise is pretty much down along with a lot of other ones. And uh, more and more seem to be kind of going down that route. So, so ti or, uh, tiny tiny uh, augmented biscuits. Can you explain, like, why this is happening? Um, so what Nintendo did recently is they they started their own online service, similar to how PlayStation and Xbox have. Their service is a lot cheaper. It's twenty dollars a year. Um, they it has some controversy. Nintendo's. A lot of Nintendo's online components were free up until the Switch. When the Switch came out, they announced that they were going to start doing a paid online service and they were going to provide some benefits. Some of those benefits has already come out. One of the benefits is that people get certain discounts on games um, through like the their, their point system um, if they're a subscriber. Uh, another thing they've done is they actually sold certain things only for subscribers, one of those being uh, these Nintendo... Uh, they're essentially SNES or uh, Nintendo. They're NES controllers, but they're NES Joy-Con controllers that click into your Switch. 
the only buy the only way to buy these though is to actually be a Nintendo online service subscriber. And the kind of bad thing about these controllers is that they only work for their uh NES um game app. Now what I mean NES game app is Nintendo when Nintendo's online service was uh you know came online and released they provided a uh a pretty much god i can't even remember i can't even think of what it's called essentially it's an app for the switch where you can play old s uh old nintendo games whether this it be NS, snes nes or game boy well or is it they've only released nes games for now right. but apparently people have data mined this app and they've seen emulators on there for snes for 64 and for GameCube. So people are really excited for this thing. So they're like, if this thing takes off and Nintendo does start including those other types of games, then their online service would be worth it. But a lot of people are saying right now, for what you're getting, it's not worth it. Because you're just getting a bunch of Nintendo games that people already have or already paid for. The big controversy now, the big controversy was, and this doesn't surprise people, is before Nintendo probably like a month or two before Nintendo started releasing or was going to release their online service, a lot of these ROM shots were getting down by Nintendo. Now, people speculate, and it's, you know, essentially you can kind of like connect the dots, is the reason why Nintendo was doing this was because, one, they didn't want anyone competing with their service because they always do this. Whenever something that they're going to release is popular, uh, whenever they're going to release something that they know uh is popular in like either the emulation scene or the um you know you know smaller I- I project scene similar to how what they did with uh the person who did that remake of Metroid 2 yeah they shut that down and then lo and behold a month later they announced you know Metroid Return, Return of Samus, Samus on yeah. the 3DS so this is what they think this is what a lot of people speculate happened was Nintendo was like well we want to release our our little ni- Nintendo our NES ROM app for the Switch, but we don't want any competitors and we don't want people making free money off of it, so they shut down all these ROM sites. The other big controversy that happened with this is recently they had an update to their games, especially the, Ninten- the Legend of Zelda game. They added a couple more games to their system, uh, to their little app, which was Balloon Fight and uh, Dodgeball. Like, Dodgeball something, I don't know. Super but Dodgeball. Super Dodgeball. Yeah. But they also added a save file for the Legend of Zelda ROM on there. And a save file is essentially a hacked save where you start the game off with a bunch of items. A bunch of like... The white sword, the the magic shield. Yeah, yeah. you start with a bunch of items that makes the game a lot easier from the get-go. You still have to collect all the the Triforce pieces, but it makes it a lot easier. Now people are kind of like up in arms over because they're essentially saying, you took down all these ROM sites and now you're going to benefit from people who made custom like hacked Mm -hmm. uh, ROMs or ISOs, or even save files. So that's kind of the big controversy now, and it's, I kind of think that's kind of a shitty move to do, but I also, I know you brought up a really good point, which was, this is their property, like, this is their IPs, and they own this stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, some of the, uh, I'm, I'm big into, like, the ROM hacking community. I like really catching, like, these, like, great little improvements they make on games. One of my favorite ones is directional jumps in Castlevania, one, two, and three makes the game way more like you know it's it just feels the controls feel right. Uh, speaking of Zelda, someone made a, a game hack where they made the graphics look more like uh, the Super Nintendo graphics. I mean, it doesn't look you know pixel perfect to them, but they look very similar. They almost look like the uh, Link's Awakening. But one of the other improvements they did was a map that actually shows you where you are and will fill in the details like. I think in the original Zelda, it's just this sort of gray card, and it shows like a blinking light, which is you. But in this version, they actually show you the actual like design of the map. You know, you can see the ground, and like you know, if it's a green area, they'll have little you know bits of green and stuff like that. Which you know, it's it's gr- it's it's remarkable how many people can like work through the limitations of the NES and you know make it make a, a normal game like a lot better. Obviously, they're not going to sell it because you know they can't. And if people do, they're going to get in trouble. It's rightfully so. But yeah, it's kind of weird that like Nintendo would like take people's hard work and stuff like that and, ch- and change it. If, if that's going to be the case. Um, and like 
I kind of like say, okay, well, it is their property. They can, you know, th- if they want to take down these sites that have all their little, you know, the ROMs on there, fine. Um, but uh, I think one of the other things is, is that we'll never see, like, I mean, they can get, they can sell all the Nintendo games they want, but, like, what about those games that weren't, you know, licensed by, nin- or not licensed, but, like, they can't sell again because of copyright or, or whatnot. What about like Star Wars the Nintendo game or Star Trek the nin- Nintendo game, which was one of my favorite ones when I was a kid? Uh, games that you know weren't exclusively released by Nintendo, but you know was just published under their license, and like it was done by a, a a game company that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, and that's kind of and that's kind of the the sad thing with this whole um, with this whole kind of it's destroying history. Des- destroying history yeah. is is like you said. How are you going to be able to play these games? Like. W- what if, what if, you know what if what's gonna happen? What if you were a developer on one of these early Nintendo games, yeah, and no one can ever play it, exactly. And, and you had you know, like you'll for it'll forever be lost. Um, I think Tiny Dinosaurs mentioned that was kind of the case with the Batman, uh, the NES game. NES game. No one knows who made that. Yeah, game. Yeah, because it was made by Sunsoft. Yeah. but Sunsoft didn't really put any credits or anything. Right. So nobody knows who made the music, who made the graphics. It was it, it was like a common practice to. Not reveal game makers through credits, so everyone has to use a pseudonym. Yeah. Uh, and um, just because they wanted to hang on to that game maker. Yeah. But li- yeah, like Sunsoft doesn't know, or Sunsoft's not around anymore. No, right? they're no longer around. They're, yeah, they're yeah they didn't know who made that game, and the people who worked there didn't know who made that game. Yeah. So and it's a great game. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of that's, that's actually that's actually I'm glad that changed, um, but that's really that's really, you know. It's kind of lame, yeah. It's pretty depressing. depressing. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's funny because I remember uh, reading an article, and you know when this whole thing with Konami and Kojima came down happened, and how Konami basically was trying to erase Kojima, uh, you know, off of Metal Gear Solid Five, and how, uh, uh, you know, how they were trying their best to not credit him, and how it was a Konami game, blah yeah. blah. And somebody made a good point uh, on one of the articles I was reading, saying. I think the problem with what happened was at one point, uh, you know, a lot of these developers weren't weren't credited for their creations, and then a certain and once they started create getting credited, um, you started seeing a lot and lot of these games, especially in the PS2 era and P- like PS2, PS3 era, you were seeing a lot of these developers solely being credited for these games. Like you had your Kojimas, you had your uh, your Fumeda. Uh, I forgot his last name. He's the one who did the uh, Shadow of the Colossus and yeah. Eco. Um, you know, you had your who's the guy who does um, uh, the Final Fantasy games? No, oh, um, Nobu Uematsu. Yeah, you had your Nobu Uematsu. You also had your. Uh, he was also uh, I forgot. You ha- you even had like even with the U.S. developers, you yeah. had your your Cliffy B's, your Cliff Belenskis who did fucking Gears of War. You had fucking. You didn't really have something like that with like. Uh, you know, master with the fucking Halo, but I mean, you had a lot of these games that were made by a team, but obviously you had one focal person who was like the main head of it. Yeah, the guy um, who again, created the big, force basically. Yeah. yeah, the biggest one being like one of the biggest ones was Hideo Kojima. Um, also, you know, the li- the Legend of Zelda games, uh, you know, or any Mario game was uh, Moyimoto, you know, Morimoto. Um, and the, the Miyamoto. Thing, oh, Miyamoto, there you go. Morimoto I was, thi- I, was like thi- I was thinking the Iron Chef yeah. guy. Um, <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> but at a certain point. I Iron Chef <laughs> Italy. Yeah, and I think at a, I think at a certain point, um, you know, I think Konami realized, like, I think Kojima was just getting too big. And he was just probably spending way too much money. So I think they were trying to scale that back. So it was funny, the article was saying, like, they feel like this whole era of rock star developers kind of like collapsed on itself and yeah. bit it and and like kind of bit itself in the ass because they kind of painted this huge target on them. So now these publishers are like, okay, you're this big fucking rock star developer. You're known for making these big fucking awesome games that sell well. What happens when you have a flop? Now you're fucked. You're like, right. we're gonna slowly blame you. So I think I can see why Konami did that, but they kind of like did a scorched earth tactic where <laughs> they basically got rid of everything he was doing. They tried to remove his ga- his name on everything. They not only did that, they also got rid of like PT. Two, yeah. You know, they got rid of two other IPs and and which was Castlevania and and Sign Hill. So you're kind of at this point, you're like, uh, so what's gonna happen? <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. It's 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 it sucks. It's sad. I mean. 
you would never see that in the in the movie industry in the film industry i think honestly because you have unions yeah um yeah they they have unions so that keeps them safe um i mean directors leave projects for you know uh danny boyle for example left uh the latest james bond film because it created differences mm -hmm. uh same thing happened with uh, um uh what's it called edgar wright he didn't you know enjoy the he didn't like the creativity of uh, or how he was working on uh, Ant Man, so he just left Creative Differences. I mean, it wasn't like a malicious leave; it was just more, I can't work in this type of environment, so I'm just gonna leave before it becomes any more trouble, kind mm -hmm. of thing. And you know, they they still work on movies and stuff like that. They like working on more personal projects. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I don't know. Then there's those game makers like Phil Fish that I don't give a shit about. Phil <laughs> Fish. I Phil Fish has always been soured in my mind because he just comes off as really, really fucking pretentious. Yeah, he's a dick. Him, him, yeah. and and actually no, I'm thinking of Jonathan Blow. Jonathan, Jonathan Blow, Blow, Jonathan Blow is the one who comes off as really, really fucking pretentious. Right. And Phil Fish just comes off as a guy who just can't take pressure. He, he he's tweak. No, you more like you need to get a publicist. You right. need to not ever, ever any talk to anybody. Wait, or is Phil Fish the one who goes like to people's like? comments and like says how no, they're wrong about how they know like that's jonathan game. blow i think oh, yeah. I, yeah, I think you're also making yeah phil fish is the one who um he, he, he was fez. the one he did fez yeah. and he was the one who got called out as like a big giant baby by some some like moronic fucking some uh, some asshole like show commenter yeah and he basically threw a huge fit and said fuck it i'm not doing fez anymore like i'm sick of dealing with the video game industry right and it sucks because you, he has talent, but I was like, at that point, it's like, why did nobody step in? Even the publisher, why didn't this publisher step in and like, all right, dude, we're gonna get you a fucking publicist because we can't have you. Yeah. Like you obviously can't handle the pressure of having to be a public persona. I think he's just like a, I think he's a baby. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it sucks, but yeah. I also get it. I mean, I mean, I you never know how people how those situations are unless yeah. you're into them. So I don't understand, but I mean, again. You also gotta. You also gotta also think about it on the public end. Like we don't have any kind of insight into that world. The only thing we see is what you do and what you say. Yeah. So, if you're there going into people's comments and telling them that they're wrong, of course we're gonna think you're some kind of pretentious piece of shit. Right. Who like thinks he's fucking holier than thou? Of course, fucking we're all gonna think Phil Fish is a giant fucking crying man baby because he can't take the pressure because somebody said something mean to him and he threw a huge fucking tantrum. Like my kids do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I say mean things to my kids all the time. Fuck them. <laughs> Fucking toughen them up. Anyways, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, Fez is a great game. I'll, I'll admit to that. But he's uh, like, he too much of a collectathon for me. Yeah. Oh, I, really? I I really wanted to like Fez. Yeah. I mean, it had a great art style and mm -hmm. great music, and I liked it. Um, but just like, yeah. but just like Japanese RPGs, I just couldn't get into it. I just can't stand where I you're can't. Gonna, you're gonna be drowned by Phil Fish's tears. I know. I I honestly can't stand it where the main gameplay component, the main gameplay mechanic of a game mm -hmm. is collecting collecting things so you can move on to the next level all right like i fucking hate it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you ever played like what's it called donkey kong on game boy that was a fun game where you have to collect all these little keys and you have to get the key to yeah. open the doors and, and it was funny because that's kind of the reason why i didn't like mario 64 but yeah. then i played mario odyssey and i was like oh this is really fun but then once i finished the game you know got past all the gameplay stuff and finished it now you gotta collect all the moons. I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> I stop. I stop playing. <laughs> but you, you know, there's a main point of the game, which it wasn't just collecting. Yeah, the main point of the game was the actual gameplay, which is fucking yeah. sweet. But then at the end of it, you can oh collect all the moons. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I like, you know, I guess getting different endings is like the my thing. Is like you would, yeah, like di different endings. I especially a happy ending. I just want to put. I just want them to put Bowsette in Super Mario Odyssey. Bowsette. I think we want. I think I need to talk about Bowsette Ugh. and how that blew up and how there's so much porn about Bowsette. Ugh. What's Bowsette? It's like Bowser. Don't type in Bowsette. <laughs> well, is it like a slash fiction thing? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. A lot of horny oh, fucking Jesus Christ. A lot, a, a lot of fucking horny as Nintendo fans. I, it's weird. Like, I don't know if this is, like, an influence of, like, I don't know. I guess it's always been there. There's always been, like, a fandom of, like, pop culture where they went, like, Kirk and Spock to get together. Or there's, like, you know, that furry, the furry culture, which they swear it's not sexual, but it totally is. Hey, or they're the ones who got Tony the Tiger off of Twitter. Oh, what? 
Yeah, apparently a bunch of furries were like retweeting and tweeting Tony the Tiger, like right. the the Frosted Flakes like mascot account. Yeah, like the actual account they had for him for Twitter, and they like banned, they like closed the account because they got so many furries fucking like messaging him asking him to fuck them or something like that. It was, I probably don't have the entire story, but that's what I that's what I've heard. Uh, no, you, that's probably the entire story. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Bowsette. Yeah, I just excluded our entire uh, furry fandom, which I, I don't know. give a shit about. Are, <laughs> is Vic a furry? No, Vic's not a. Vic's not a furry. I hope not, Vic. <laughs> if you're a furry, please get help. Uh, <laughs> God damn, <laughs> we lost all our subscribers. We don't have furry subscribers. If we did, we'd have billions of them, and I would probably like cater to their needs. Oh, here, here's a here's a stuffed animal you can have sex with. You weirdos. Who hurt you? <laughs> huh? Apparently furries. <laughs> uh, anyways. Uh, Main, Maine to Calico hurt you? Ugh. Why did you have to? Don't. <laughs> We're not talking about that guy. All right. Uh, actually, actually, uh, what's it called? Uh, Tiny Dinosaurs and Thought Otter are both, both, both like, I guess, furries, too. But they're cool furries. Well, yeah, they don't. Here's the thing. They're we not 13-year-old boys who want to, or I'm sorry, 30-year-old men who want to, like, have sex in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you want to. <laughs> If you want to get in touch with us, uh, you can reach us in uh, uh, on Twitter at Incognetbro or at Chuck and Dice. I also have an Instagram, guys, and then I don't draw anything in furries. <laughs> it's called it's a it's at Chuck and Dice. Why do you why do you hate furries so much? Huh? Oh, because they're they're worse than they're like you know how the the sort of prototypical like I guess you could say I, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this. I don't care. Bring it. Uh, the typical like millennial thing, like how millennials like act and stuff. You know, people who are born in that you know the era, because it's it's all about when you were born kind of thing. They don't act like that. However, I've noticed that furries kind of do act like that. Like people who are really into it. Not 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 all of them, obviously. There's a, there's there, there's deviations. I think I think we've talked about this. Yeah. I know we talked about this with tiny dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, which is people. We don't have a problem with people who identify as furries. Yeah. We. We find it annoying. I I'm gonna say actually I'm gonna say, not say we. I find it very irritating when I interact with furries who that's the only way they can identify yeah, that's themselves. The thing. Yeah, that's If that's the only way they can identify themselves and it's the only way they can relate to other people is if they're furry. Yeah. That's the part that's kind of irri- that's irritating to me because it essentially kind of shuts them off from other experiences. And it's not kind of. Just for his Star Trek fans, you know, comic book fans, if that's the only thing they like, I mean, it's cool that you like that, but if that's the only way you can interact, I don't know. <laughs> actually, actually, and th- that's yeah. that's that's actually my problem with yeah. with metal fans too. Yeah, metal fans just like metal, and that's it. Because I've I've like, oh, I've that's a pretty good jazz song. Jazz sucks. I've interacted Metallica. With, I've and throughout my entire high school, yeah. I inter- I I hung out with a lot of I didn't hang out with them. Yeah. But I socialized with a few metal fans, mm-hmm. and they were the fucking worst. Yeah. Because they, like you said, they only liked metal music. Any music that someone talked about that wasn't metal, yeah. they immediately fucking badmouthed it. Right. Um, uh, uh, actually, it, and, and, they were, and, and a lot of them were Metallica fans. Right. And that's another reason why I fucking hate Metallica fans. Right. Uh, th- 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 another way to see it is there's, you know... I'm I'm a little older, but even when I was like younger, I liked eating at different places, like different cuisines. Like I liked going to, like restaurants, that weren't a chain. And then I had friends who just went to McDonald's, Taco Bell, and then uh, and then you know, like and then fancy for them was like Chili's. Yeah, fancy for them was like Chili's. Like to me, that's not fancy. Chili's is like what you eat in in like college, because you just have to and you need to save money. Or you're there to like study and just have. They didn't. They, people didn't have like an awesome ho- blossom. People don't like hole in the wall restaurants. Yeah, I mean, like I I like hole in the wall restaurants. I like you know you know a little fancier restaurants. I just like you know restaurants with gimmicks, gastro pubs, whatever. I like going to different places. And occasionally, yeah, I'll go to I don't know Popeyes Chicken. Um, don't you ever talk bad about Popeyes? Chicken? Well, I love Popeyes Chicken, but like it's not the only place I'm going to go to. That's Popeyes Chicken is not my meal every freaking day. And like some people just like eating Taco Bell or McDonald's every day. They 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 like, and and like I can understand a child. I can't understand someone in their, like their thirties, or more. I I can't un- I, I'll quite honestly I can't understand a person in their twenties, wanting to go to McDonald's all the freaking time. That's something you should really outgrow when you're a teen. 
I still get it. McDonald's McDonald's occasionally. Yeah, but you don't do it every freaking day. You don't say no. You don't. You because don't go to another restaurant. It's like, why can't we just go to McDonald's? That's true. That's true. Like that's that's the attitude I feel that some some of these like sort of fandom groups or whatever kind of they are. They just yeah. love that one thing so much that it, it it and it does come off really childish. Yeah, I guess I guess yeah, and and like I said, it just it's very irritating. Yeah. Um. There's been a few times where I've talked about subjects that don't have to do with that and i've been yeah. dismissed because like oh you're a normie a normie yeah that's what i've been called that they're like oh you're a normie you like you're you're normie i'm like what I, no, can you not talk please forever oh well you like to have sex with people in suits <laughs> just <laughs> like that scene from uh, the shining doesn't everybody nice party <laughs> god damn it okay <laughs> <laughs> Daddy! Daddy! How did we get to the shiny? <laughs> God damn it. That, that's, there's a guy in a fursuit in that. He's like going down on that other old dude. That's a very disturbing scene. It is a very disturbing scene. Not even like... Yeah, not I, I, by not the way, I, I read the book recently. I don't really like it that much. Really? Yeah. I like the movie better. <laughs> Doesn't Stephen King hate like? Oh, he Kubrick? hates he hates, he hates Kubrick's, Kubrick's version, yeah. right? Yeah, because he said it's too it's too too much of a downer. Yeah, I did see that television movie, and the television movie ends with like Danny blowing a kiss to his dad, who's a force ghost. But Stephen King loves the miniseries, though. Oh, apparently. he loves it because he wrote that damn thing. It's weird. Yeah, Danny. Um, what's her name's in it? Uh, Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca M- Monier or M- M- Rebecca de Monet? Yeah, they're the the chick from um, the Tom Cruise film uh, Risky Business. I don't even remember. I remember her name because I always r- relate her name to the Wayne's World yeah. joke of Re- Rebecca de Hornet. Yeah, <laughs> she was in the Hand That Rocks a Cradle. There you go. Hand that rocks my. She was cradle. Al- she was also in uh, Identity. Oh, she was yeah. But she was good in it. She didn't save the movie or anything. <laughs> or I guess the television movie. If you like that television movie, you suck and you're probably a furry. All right, that's it. God damn it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Keep it rolling. Subscribe. Share, like, and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> How does this work? Stop recording. <laughs>